Hello. Let us start the session. Good morning, everyone. And I extend a warm welcome to all of you on the webinar of Sp Space Vehicle Design. Today is the day that we are all waiting for because our Astro Club is uh, so much interested in building a satellite. I hope we get a lot of guidance from this talk. I feel extremely honored to introduce our speaker of this webinar, Dr. Jayakumar Venkateshan, sir. He's the Chief Technology Officer for Synergy Moon, which is one of the finalists in $30 million Google Lunar Express. He's an astropreneur and also a Chief Executive Officer for Valleys Mercenaries International Private Limited India. And he has his special interest in human space flight programs and orbital research stations. This is just a brief info about him and there is a lot to tell. And uh, we are also uh, so much thankful to him for taking his time out of his busy schedule to guide us in this space vehicle design. We hope that all the students will be able to seek our guidance and imbibe something from his explanation. And now I request our speaker, Dr. Jaikumar Venkateshan, sir, to guide us and start this talk. Yeah, Namaste. Very good morning to all. And thanks for the invitation for Triple IT DM. It's like it's my great glad to discuss with you all uh, on in this astronomy club. So it's like a, uh, it's a great pressure. So I'm happy to interact with you all and uh, we connect you through virtual network. And uh, sometimes the COVID-19 made everyone as crazy. And, uh, um, you know, like, so this will create you uh, like a global reach to everyone. It's like uh, by virtual platform. And uh, I'd like to speak about something really space vehicle design is uh, in general, it is like a space transportation vehicle, just wherever you wanted to fly. Uh, I mean, like um, beyond the earth, something like that. It is like a Uber service or maybe can like a taxi service to space. Either it goes or the satellite or maybe the human or maybe something, some animals. So this is the space transportation systems. It means mostly uh, it will cut, covered on the outer space actually. When aircraft can fly up to 12 kilometers, but uh, you can fly this space shuttle, I mean, deeper and deeper. Essentially the transportation is identified mostly it is like a spacecraft. Spacecraft is a general generic term. Some people will call like a satellite. Some people can uh, say some different name, like kind of a space dragon crew or commercial crew, or maybe the cargo uh, capsule, something like that. Uh, like example, like a Soyuz spacecraft is like a manned spacecraft, but it's Soyuz one and Progress is the uh, cargo shipping vehicle. And even Gaganyan also, it's like a manned capsule. There will be like a different terminologies actually. What you can able to see here is like uh, the first diagram is the Soyuz uh, TMM. It's like a manned spacecraft of the Russian program, Russian Space Organization. And the second one is like our own, uh, the cargo supply spacecraft that we are planning in the next uh, three or four years. Uh, we are aiming for that one. It's named the project is developed jointly in Agro, it's a Russian private space players. And uh, the the another capsule which you are seeing is is like a Gaganyan, the human space flight program of Indian space activities. Those things. I would like to go a little bit about the space transportation system in general. In Earth to orbit to position the satellite, that will be like uh, the first case. The second is the Earth to orbit and return. It's like uh, flying to the I mean those going to some orbit. And uh, you mean you can just fly around the earth and you can come in back like that. So it's like a similar to Gaganyan, uh, Gaganyan mission. And this number three is earth to orbit and return to return for cargo. It is this may this type of the space transportation system example is a progress. Progress of the Russian vehicle and also space dragon crew one. It is also for unmanned crew. You can able to take your supplies, your whatever is supplies, like luggages in, in generic term, it can carry to the International Space Station or any anywhere you wanted to deliver. It's like a courier service kind of thing. And orbit to orbit, I mean, it's like a interplanetary missions. It's we are going to Mars or Venus or Saturn or something like that. So this will uh, consider like a orbit to orbit, deep space vehicles. And most importantly, we can technically we can call it like in the generic 
launch vehicle. It is used to transport some payloads to Earth through space, actually. And the re-entry vehicle, we can we can say like it is from space to Earth. Actually, this is the basic difference about uh, uh, I mean space transportation system. Normally, we consider like this. And you can see the general overall uh, the functionality of design requirement for the space launch vehicle. Actually, there will be like a different uh, uh, launch vehicle phenomena. It is like first of all uh, the mission requirement is most mandatory because what type of the mission and uh, what are the ex expectations you are looking forward actually. Like you are going to lower Earth orbit or you are going to Moon or you are going to Mars. Or uh, something like that. Such that uh, I mean, uh, once we have the mission, I want to go on Moon. I want to go to Venus, or I want to go to Mars. Something like you have the mission requirement. For that, I mean, what you going? What are the activities you are going to do on? Either you it is like a robotic crew or a manned crew or something. You want to the technology tech demonstrator or something that you have to work on it. In that, there will be like uh, to major, I mean, like in generically, we can say like a uh, structural part and a propulsion option, something like that. Some systems are like some scientific, uh, scientific experiments or some experimental capsule that we can conduct a small laboratory, mini miniature laboratories or something inside that. So you can construct on it. And there will be like you have the living room, like a uh, small it is like a space apartment you can say like it's not apartment it, it not like an earth but it's like you can say some kind of this very tiny compartment okay it is like a few meters in diameter so something like that so mostly it is uh, the launch vehicles uh, uh, i mean we can say there will be like a lot of uh, parameters we have to uh, consider during the designing process actually first step is like mission requirement you have or you finalize and then after that we have to start working on uh, vehicle design i mean how much uh, how we are going to build your rocket actually we have to go in a overall vehicle layout we have to go and after that we have to go by step by step step by step means there will be like a different major i mean the uh, critical components of the launch vehicle and then we go for a uh, subsystems Mostly we can say like uh, the system design actually you have to work on it. System design is mostly, uh, you know, it's like a key role of transporting something from the earth and placing something on objects and application requirements actually. There will be like kind of a different uh, staging that you need to do actually where you are going. So that will, uh, that will give the opportunity like you can design your so the rockets actually, uh, I mean like launch vehicles, the type of launch vehicles you can design actually. And also there will be like a space science and um, there will be like uh, uh, the different models, for example, like uh, uh, aerodynamic structural design and then aerothermal design and the propulsion systems design and navigation and guidance and control. You have to navigate and you need a guidance to, and we have to control you how to reach your destination. And uh, stage auxiliary subsystems, like a type of staging methods that you are looking forward something, and flight mechanics and uh, uh, the mission design. And uh, it is like a overall uh, system. I mean, like a complete design systems that you have to incorporate to satisfy the, the requirement. So that once it is a satisfactory performance, then you can um, go for a, I mean, like optimal vehicle design. But in initial stages, you have to work on uh, initial design. Actually, it's like a preliminary design, you can say. Like uh, then after that, we go for a critical design review, and then uh, it can able to provide something like. Mostly the system requirements, you can say there's like a ascent STS. As I mentioned in the previous slide, it's like something we are taking from Earth to space. So the primary function of, uh, we can technically, we can call like STS, it has to deliver some identified satellite into the orbit or maybe in the capsule into space. The satellites are generally, it's like a Keplerian trajectory around and uh, for 
the satellite it will be remained uh, specified specified orbit for entire service period for example we want to service for a two years or three years or something like you have to uh, uh, you know the i mean how long you are going to operate the satellites and this imposes like significant energy of potential of kinetic energy masses and uh, and example like uh, for example the satellites are placed uh, in a lower earth orbit the i mean for that you need a specific energy it's around 33000 kilojoules per kilogram if you are looking for a gto geo transfer orbit does the value about uh, it is the value about uh, for 54000 kilojoules per kg it is required for interplanetary missions and uh, mostly uh, uh, the values is like further go up i mean depends on the where uh, i mean the definite mass of the satellite and also the vehicle and uh, uh, i mean where you are going to perform so to meet the desires of orbital conditions mostly the satellites are pre uh, precisely the propulsion uh, systems that will position and also the velocity accurate, accurately to execute some flawless functions i mean the vehicle has been the following the trajectories for the during the entire mission and uh, uh, the functions systems consist of mostly the uh, linear acceleration and the altitude uh, rate of sensors and navigation guidance control systems algorithms and software and uh, onboard computers and uh, the control power plant control power plant is like a propulsion system design mostly the vehicle structure systems is like a basically load carrying member of the vehicle and it compromises mostly the fairings and inter i mean the uh, the structural bodies of entire the i mean the launch vehicle and uh, the payload is the one the either we use the satellite or maybe we can use the capsule for example manned mission means we can use the manned capsule something like that so there will be like a critical uh, aerodynamic disturbances of the vehicle and there will be like a harsh environment of launch vehicles something like that it will be there so mostly the, we go back to the the second uh, uh, i mean the system requirement for descent vehicle as i mentioned uh, the the descent vehicle is like a reentry capsule i mean after you are going to the space and when you are re entering in it so uh, these things i can able to uh, discuss with you a lot about uh, in a in a few minutes after that so mostly uh, it is covered by the for example the cost of the typical uh, space launch systems it is like a propulsion and the major structures elements is cost around 70% of the budget actually the avionics cost 10% and integration 10% and interface it cost some 10% of the thing so there will be like uh, many the critical uh, design process we can say like there will be like we go for a subsystem level actually subsystem level it means there is a like a launch vehicle uh, there is like a launch vehicle and uh, the and there will be like a subsystems what are the some kind of the Uh, subsystems and most importantly uh, the, uh, the develop development cycle the development cycle the development cycle uh, is uh, something uh, we can say um, there's like a size of the vehicle mission design and there will be like a vehicle feasibility so that it can uh lift off the humans to space that's what uh, gslv the people are right now working on india's manned space program uh, i mean they are studying the feasibility studies how we can putting sending some humans to the space something like that and uh, the configuration they do the feasibility studies and configuration finalization done then they prepare the report and they do the design and development activities and realization of the hardware and the qualification and uh, testing and that will be like a uh, simulators something uh, they have to work and uh, mostly uh, there will be like a uh, uh, different uh, capabilities of the systems actually they have to uh, check the uh, individual subsystems for example like different different analysis actually 
different different analysis it means uh, the uh, structural analysis and uh, uh, you can say there will be like uh, aerothermodynamic designs and uh, there will be uh, uh, vehicle structures performance and aerodynamics and flight mechanics and uh, vehicle avionics some of the auxiliary systems to design and uh, uh, there will be like a uh, thermal uh, performance i mean like thrusters thrusters i mean how they are performing how we can able to control uh, control all these things so these are uh, these are all uh, the things we have to translate the system requirements into the subsystem that's what these subsystems generation is like a components and also there, there will be like a vehicle constraints the integrations of uh, Uh, subsystems like a uh, power and energy and also uh, there's like a sensors different sensors and there will be like uh, different uh, conditions and also the uh, tasks actually it has to give i mean it has to perform the task i mean the, des- the desire task actually uh, it is like a define the payload in general the optimal vehicle sizing can be done uh once the preliminary design is been done so when we go for an optimal design there will be like uh, many of the things will be eliminated like uh, try to uh, take the more uh, payload and also reduce the structural mass as uh, possible actually so mostly it is this will be the extremely uh, it's like important to define the basic objective of the mission and also it is like uh, closely linked with uh, functional activities like uh, different type of the mission is most important either it goes the remote sensing or communications or weather monitoring or some scientific experiments or something so mostly the orbital elements uh, are something like uh, cost and also the reliability of the mission and of system performance and vehicle performance vehicle health uh, so these are all uh, mostly important actually the next is to you need to define the propulsion system is like each stage actually total impulse of uh, each stage and uh, thrust actually thrust time profile uh, it should meet the system uh, constraints at lower dynamic profile actually it's like a lower acceleration uh, profile and uh, there will be like uh, structural design requirements to meet overall mass objective and also uh, the envelope and capacity with stand to the maximum loads actually transient performance of ignition and uh, shut off something the main functions of uh, ng i mean like uh, uh, navigation and guidance control systems in the launch vehicle is to direct the propulsion system the energy stabilize the vehicle against the disturbance and to ensure that the rs uh, i mean to meet the demand of ngc system requirements like um, type of the sensors used in the gyros and accelerometers and uh, you can say like allowed errors on the stiffness on to reject the uh, disturbance actually you know the the external environment will be the very harsh environment and the vehicle stability is also the entire regime of the maneuvering uh, in atmospheric space actually uh you can say uh, next is like uh, there will be like a, a subsystem level Uh, that's like a propulsion thing actually uh, it is like the vehicle control is generally derived derived from the thrust vector control by the deflecting the main nozzle engine of uh, propulsion systems therefore the deflection needed to uh, you know the propulsion system to maximize control and there will be like a tail off characteristics engine um, cut off and also there will be differential thrust differential thrust is more uh, in the engine it will be used actually it will be like a steady state uh, uh, thrust level and the burn time and the propulsion systems under the frequency and the ignitions and shut off restraints and progressive stages and have the influence of mutually through the pogos interactions etc something like uh, and the pogos interactions will happen using this the propulsion model uh, where it can Uh, produces a lot of um, uh, i mean like a kind of the vibration something like the co- oscillations you can say like thing uh, i mean oscillations the conceptual studies mostly it will lead the uh, generation of the systems and subsystems requirement mostly in preliminary design and both the requirements you can see the overall functionalities and also the validation of the launch vehicle to be next point actually 
there will be like important uh, systems uh there will be like uh, suspects uh, aspects like uh, what we can say uh it is like a completely inter- interdisciplinary design element process as i mentioned the launch vehicle technologies is like one thing it's like either it can classify its materials manufacturing methods materials can be the advanced materials new new materials research something manufacturing is the type of producing it either you the traditional machining process or maybe use the 3d printer components or something integration is the type of the uh, method you are trying to integrate the vehicle systems and the quality standards that will be different and cost of the mission and uh, the schedule uh, when uh, when it get ready to fly so those things and uh, and in, a, in another hand it's like a propulsion system it's like a new methods of propulsion system or something the vehicle structures the design and uh, navigation guidance control systems and there will be like a stage accelerator system something like uh, and there will be like a selection of stage control and digital pilot uh, autopilot something and the selection of uh, propulsion stages like energy distribution and design analysis something and in aerodynamics if we say the external configuration and uh, aerodynamic uh, characterization of the thermal design and analysis and the material selection of design and analysis something and there will be uh, mostly the typical uh, launch vehicle is like a mission designer has addressed most of the things of the very uh, carefully from the initial design phase to the vehicle at the fine final thing actually there will be like a failure uh, risk assessments and managements also there like a fault re analysis and also the fme a failure mode and uh, effective analysis and the failure mode effective and critical analysis so uh, that also can be performed actually and you, when you come for the integration as i mentioned integrated design aspects for the launch vehicle systems as like uh, overall system and subsystem requirements are generally functional requirements and each uh, will be operating the environment and uh, disturbances something like each subsystem is like closely linked with other design uh, elements and also the vehicle uh, systems so here uh, you can say the various process that will be like uh, uh, propulsion systems like a stage sizes sizing of the propulsion modules steady state thrust and the transit behavior of uh, stages during the ignition and the tail off and the slow damping of liquid stages and vehicle structural design vehicle structural design and structural dynamics aspect to avoid the interaction of control and uh, propellant sloshing so mostly the selection of suitable control power plant the scheme will be the give the real time uh, identification of the staging and ex- i mean the strategy to uh, to work on the autopilot and uh, it can give the guidance algorithms and we provide the accurate uh, satellite injection or something like that so mostly the operation environments are something you know, like uh, the matrix you can say like the test matrix for vehicle separation system it's like the component level subsystem level and analysis and uh, we can classify into that mostly the component levels are like actuators and there will be used the valves and retro motors like a pyrotechnics they used to to separate the stages and see the performance i mean like you should not uh, uh, touch down or any they disturb the launch vehicle when it is going to i mean uh, the stage release actually interstage structural components and the structural design aspects and subsystem level is like a staging models like a static test and separation test with the pyros and mostly the analysis and simulation you can see like uh, there will be like a separation analysis studies the simulation with the with the wide uh, dispersion of the vehicle of environment there will be like a lot of uh, failure modes of the studies they they will do the with the uh, vehicle aerodynamics and uh, it is mostly they will study the load distribution of the vehicle of the entire length and uh, structural design and control design and uh, it can go in a distribution measures it's like entire the vehicle uh, i mean the aerodynamic buffers and uh, generation of uh, dispersion of the bounds of various uh, tricky task this will be performed and the progressive test of uh, hardware in the loop is like uh, testing the separations with the actuators because they use the actuator mechanism and also there will be like uh, navigation and guidance systems that are also needed to uh, to give an uh, exact information uh, uh, during the separations and also guide the way large vehicle to the uh, predetermined trajectory 
so this will happen and integrated 60 uh, uh, i mean uh, the navigation it also is like a scale factors gravity effects and uh, it can give the uh, entire uh, so in integrated uh, digital simulations like uh, all axes should be get able to i mean uh, to to get performed actually it's like the six degree of freedom is like uh, integrated digital simulations mostly they use for the test matrix and a suitable test facilities are like a planned or something there will be like a trouble free separations of the system in the flight and uh, it should uh, the test bed to attempt all possible flight conditions that's why the environment is also the most important summer you might be heard of uh, uh, there will be like a launch delay um, uh, due to the environment, something like that. So the environment also they plays the very uh, major role uh, about in the launch vehicle system. There will be like a separate, I mean, like a space transport system. You can see here, there's like a launch vehicle. Here, this is the center of the earth. I mean, here, our, for example, like a straight helicopter here. Then it goes the atmospheric flight, and after reaching the common line, goes the vacuum flight. Something here you can put in the technical diagram here. The radius of air, outer radius of the earth, and uh, there will be the satellite position that where you, Leo, for example, we consider like a Leo. Yes, so there we can. Uh, the goal is like we are placing the vehicle in Leo. So the launch site here, this is like, this is uh, our layman type of general generic sketch. This is like a technical sketch. So this is like a space transportation system trajectory goes like this. And the satellite injection will happen here and uh, to go in a described orbit. In general, you can see if you want to gain, uh, or for example, if you want to go to for a GTO, GTO, or maybe some uh, some kind some kind of uh, uh, I mean the di different uh, uh, I mean the pushing. For example, Leo missions is like uh, slowly we can go ahead. There will be like a le less delta V required, and uh, you can see here. Uh, there will be like a steep ascent it is required to reach the higher orbit. So it is like a, a theta. So this will give the, uh, the idea like uh, where you can uh, heading to actually. So here you can see uh, there's like a launch site. There's like a shallow strategy. So I mean trajectory you can go to the Leo. And here uh, you can use the higher steep trajectory for higher altitudes. So that's why you need a more delta. Then, uh, if you think on, uh, if you if you think on, if you think on uh, the STS system requirements. For example, uh, as I mentioned. The mission uh, requirements is something like we have to, we already designed actually satellite mass and uh, the energy that is required to, to reach. And the integrated system strategy and vehicle sizing and the constraints like launch site and launch azimuth that I showed in the previous slide. And uh, there will be like a vehicle configuration, everything is done. And uh, there will be trajectory also we calculated like, uh, I mean, how much the velocity loss due to gravity, drag, and 3D trajectory, something. And it will be like subsystem requirement. Is this like a overall picture of the design requirement of launch vehicle for any launch vehicle system? Uh, as I mentioned, there will be like a subsystem requirement, like a propulsion and structure, and navigational guidance and control, and the staging of auxiliary systems, and the flight mechanics and environment that plays major role. And subsystem design level is comes from stages of uh, uh, auxiliary system and a navigation guide and control system. It's like total, the entire space launch vehicle is comes here. Then it goes to the mission design, mission it, it either we can uh, think, if, yeah, this vehicle can able to take us to the moon. Then for example, like mission design is like, I want to fly, I want to land on the moon. So this is the mission something. 
so this vehicle can able to take us to the moon so this st so sts mission to meet the orbit requirements after that there will be like a for different of as i mentioned there will be like a different staging uh, actually a different type of staging of each rocket sorry. this is like a partial staging the one is like you can see here this is the partial uh, staging it's like a uh, droppable engines both and uh, the center is like a continuing engine so this is like a partial stage rocket second is like a uh, this is like a raw engine configuration and the orientation uh, the parallel staging it is like this this is everything uh, parallel so here the rocket boosters the strap on and this also this is like a gslv mark 3 you can see this, right so this one like this and uh, this is also kind of um, the, the staging process you can say like the single one uh, single engine and there will be like a multi engine the normally this is like a piggy back uh, kind of the configuration this is like a main engine you know the columbia space shuttle so this is kind of the piggy back and in russians we call like a buran program this one is like a special like kind of thing so normally the if you want to go to the new orbit you need the delta v it's like a 9.8 km per second in order to reach the leo and uh, gto as i mentioned is like a 12.2 in previous slides as i uh, i shown here so how much uh delta you needed to uh, go out so and after that geo geo synchronize earth orbit if you want to go this like we need a 13 point um, if something you want to go to the lower lunar orbit it's like a 13.6 something so what is this is what i mentioned about orbit uh, environment there will be like we can consider like a two types one is like external environment and uh, internal environment external environment you can able to do the analysis of aerothermal environment for example it's like a steady and unsteady loads and there will be like a lot of aerodynamic noises will happen it's like because it's like flying at high velocity and the acceleration will be going so there will be like interaction between air molecule particles and uh, our launch vehicle so it will create the uh, temperature and also it can use the aero dynamic noise and also there will be aerothermal environment this is called and there will be atmosphere it's like uh, it varies with the atmosphere wind and um, the atmospheric property of outside environment and uh, after that there will be like a gravity force and a spherical effect or something and when you see the internal when you are inside the rocket when you are inside the, for example let's say Uh, you are sitting inside the rocket what are the what you feel inside from that there will be kind of things is like a propulsion characteristics characteristics something like thrust pressure and the thermal loads the slosh and also the pogo pogo oscillations and tail off characteristics because when you are sitting the uh, sitting inside the vehicle there will be like a huge uh, the people call like a g force is acting on the body when you are flying to space so because due to the Uh, the vehicle and also the external environment there will be like a jet noise and maybe the shock and also the vibration inside and uh, there will be like a thrusters are all working on different different control system it's like let's think you are driving a car at like some some speed of some 100 km per hour or 150 something then you can able to feel the way, how you feel in the vehicle you are sitting inside the car like that so it's like a kind of uh, situation when you are flying in a rocket but the, the characteristics and environment will be the highly it is different uh, when you compare it to the car when you drive in a car or something like that here you can able to see in the diagram there will be like a wind profile and also the vehicle velocity the relative velocity is towards due to the wind so we have to calculate on each and every parameters in order to achieve our uh, goal Uh, there will be like a typical uh, guidance and navigation control systems you can see here navigation and control systems is like uh, 
it it is most a very critical uh, component i mean the subsystems for example you have to uh, get the sensors inputs and the data from the onboard computers and sensory parts and the gyros and the accelerometers that will acceleration rate and vehicle sequencing and the different staging process and we have to navigate them in a, in a right way and the uh, rate of the gyros you need to keep yourself the vehicle is positioning and it should be autopilot mostly and it will take guide to where that where you need to fly so it will take to you the uh, trajectory and the control power plants it is used the you need to operate the thrusters maybe you can see the elon musk um, uh, i mean the landing after it is, is a main reusable launch vehicles i mean landing uh, during the reentry is it is a very amazing thing actually so because of controlled power plant so you can able to land on this thing and mostly the control of electronics control of electronics this is most important uh, to get the electronic feedback and very sensitive and also it must be very accurate uh, in order to place uh, uh, your systems i mean to land your uh, safely you can land your rocket or maybe you can land your space shuttle or whatever you can say so there will be a kind of a different uh, methods you can say uh, there will be kind of operating environment loads and you can able to get the feedback of uh, every uh, systems uh, about uh, every systems you need to get back the feedback so that you in order to get the feedback we need a very high precise systems and also it will be uh, very uh, uh, promising one and very reliable system that we can use so that's why the most of the components are like a space qualified space graded components to, so we can call like this and uh, next is like uh, this is the real space craft of so is uh, uh, ms 17 uh, this the russian manned space flight thing actually in order to doing this we have to for example the man is flying to the space so you need to know how to drive the space craft i mean to operate the how to pilot your space craft so that you need a gn guidance and navigation control gncs and also you know to know how to operate the systems so this is the simulator it's me here uh, you are operating uh, the sos spacecraft i mean like training i mean this this kind of the training will go every astronaut or cosmonaut want to fly to the space they have to study uh, i mean they have to practice here themselves to before they fly to the space so this will teach you i mean this is like a learning uh, platform you can say uh, 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 you can practice yourself i mean there will be like flight mechanics flight trajectories or something uh, something like that we teach you like how i mean uh, there are, this is like a control systems i mean controlling uh, mechanism i mean control sticks so you can control the vehicle it is like you're driving to the space something next is like the human factor engineering mostly uh, the people are asking uh, about how i can be an astronaut or something like there will be kind of the queue selection uh, in the selection they have give the this like a basic training they will offer after selection process uh, and uh, there will be after that basic training after that they will give the advanced training like a uh, chamber test and also the aqua test some I mean like underwater experiments there will be like you can able to do and specific training like a flight uh, flight operations and all those things crew readiness those things you can give and if you want to be an astronaut or cosmonaut is not necessary you should be in a pilot or you should not you should be in like a aerospace or aeronautical engineer only anybody can be an astronaut the education is like a first gate pass to enter in it but uh, after that there will be like a separate uh, training uh, they will be offering actually depends on the uh, on the criteria for example like if you are studying the biology biomedicine yes of course there will be like a different stream like bioastronautic if you are working on uh, 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 aeronautics and astronautics or maybe uh, the flight uh, mostly the those people they are like a pilot or something or maybe uh, they can be crew commander or something other basic research people will be in the basic i mean the research crew actually so they are also giving kind of the training for the activities 
this is uh, i mean uh, institute of biomedical problem it's like one of the oldest russian academy of sciences institute uh, i mean uh, they they offer the training program for cosmonauts actually uh, this like a first uh, like a uh, first animal fly to the space from this uh, uh, this institute i mean they had they do the selection of uh, uh selection of the uh, uh, crew members either dog or animal or human and they uh, they do the performance test actually there will be like a several uh, there will be like a several uh, uh, uh human factor i mean human engineering activity uh, once uh, they get the satisfactory i mean they can do these are the uh, previous uh, astronaut candidates i mean like a test candidates cosmonaut candidates like uh, voluntary cosmonaut candidates you can say like uh, they have been like participated in the two three missions actually it's me i'm also planning for the next mission uh, by this year uh, i'm not sure because this covid how they make the impact and we got shortlisted to take part into the uh, this uh, 240 days a isolation mission in the next and uh, this is what they general this is also one kind of the analogs uh, that they do uh here it is like a bed it's like a dry call like scientifically you can call like a dry immersion the mostly the volunteer need to spend 3 to 21 days in the it's a kind of the bath tub kind of thing it's like they will uh, use this study is used for the uh, feeling like you are floating on space something like that so this body is mostly um without the pressure point it's like you just you are flying in the space kind of the feel you can able to get so what they will do is they will understand the affected mostly the affected areas they will to uh, read about the your vision and muscles and bone and your brain activity and your hearing uh, thing and your lungs and liver so those th- this two studies uh, that's called human factor engineering uh, human research activities they they do like this and uh, it's me uh, when when of my, my friends uh, colleagues they are doing the performing the uh, dry immersion baths and this kind of the studies is happening at uh, russian academy of sciences uh, in ministry of biomedical problems so they have like a uh, dry immersion baths used to create the aspects of living weightlessness activity and uh, as like is like sergey vasilevich avidev is he is my real life hero i mean is a cosmonaut he flew into the mir station space station and also something like he spent more than 747.5 days in space so, so it's always something kind of someone to always to encouraging you keep doing some activities something uh, i will come for come to for example if you, uh, everyone is know about chandrayaan 2 the crash landing happened there will be like a lot of stories are happening around like uh, people are giving their own different point of views but i'm not going to comment on it but how the future lunar communication architecture will be it's look like there will be like uh, different type of the landers like either chinese or japanese or indian landers something like uh, indian landers not landed at only probe will probe landed on moon uh, in chandrayaan 1 so uh, this like there will be like a uh, different rovers and habitation models and something extra like astronaut is performing some task here we can make the small base station here and a mobile habitat something like here and uh, the lower i mean this call like a lower orbit science something orbiter maybe can uh, keep some 100 km above the moon something so there we can able to get uh, different notes we can use the x band k band and uh, it's a different frequencies that we can use the uh, mostly in optical uh, thing because it's like a very uh, there is no such big traffic on moon something you can see the in the blue lines mostly it's like a moon uh, to to and fro from the earth so it's like a truck line trunk lines trunk link something it will be like a relay orbiter something we can place it here so that you can all collective data you can uh, get it from here and there so it will communicate it to orbiter and then it will give it to that mostly lunar gateway for you can use for the manned uh, missions to the moon something like that that's why the artemis and russia also they are trying to go to the moon something like 
i back to i just i will come to touch our indian uh, uh program of uh, um it's uh, it, this is maybe you can guys can see many of the these kind of the slides by previous isro scientist something it's mostly the world's first uh, rocket uh, i mean like against the british i mean from india he used it it's like a different innovations it came from so i just uh, we will go I'm, i'm i just i will skip some of the histories i mean you guys mostly uh, rocket revolutionary how it will happen and also we can some innovative guys i mean normally we guys uh, from diwali time festival time we have also started launching the rockets nowadays so this is kind of the amazing thing and uh, like <laughs> india is like a space space faring nation it's a kind of thing so sounding rockets of isro is normally you know like rohini a uh, series of the rockets have been developed in india and still it goes for a different uh, thing again a different uh, studies for example the metrology studies that can go up to 85 km altitude for application and the middle atmosphere uh, can go up to it's like a 100 km altitude like a carmen so and after 150 because different of the different size ranges they use these things and i think uh, ionospheric studies goes uh, so purpose is like go up to altitude of 550 km so now is become like sslv concept uh, this rocket now and uh, that will be like uh, the isro's family it is from aslv and aslv and pslv gslv gslv mark 3 so gslv mark 3 they are planning for manned uh, space vehicles it's like you need an a uh, uh, high uh, uh, lift off you need a you need a heavy heavy lift vehicles this is so uh, this is general typical layout of uh, the pslv configuration as i i shown you in a very typical small sketches you know uh, for the different stages of the rocket so this is the one is like a parallel assembly of this rocket configurations the first stage and the second stage and third stage is like a typical one and some of the subsystems as i mentioned subsystems level uh, this is like a little given a deeper an idea about here the payload will be the placed and uh, you can see there will be like a family a it is consisting of the payload adapters and the equipment base and auxiliary payload something and uh, you can see the here this is like a propellant uh, i mean the fourth stage of a tank under the engine so here you can see um, uh, interstage and uh, there will be like uh, two different retros mechanisms and uh, different nozzles something you can see in the red color mostly it is called uh, control and guidance subsystems and you know, whatever you seeing in the green color it is like a uh, uh, propulsion subsystems Uh, this is for general uh, typically how inside the pslv fourth stage it to be look like so this is the primary satellite main satellite and these are like auxiliary mounting and auxiliary satellites that is they have mounted on this so gslv configuration it is also some uh, kind of um, uh, i mean the size is very bigger and the higher lift off so uh, i just i sh- shown you something um, like in a sketch in the previously this is like in a general in 3d model model of uh, the entire the pslv launch vehicle there are different stages that in exploded view of this vehicle you can able to see and visualize so this is the uh, kind of a typical uh, uh, i mean typical uh vehicle performance you know it's like flying it's like a uh, 110 seconds it can reach up to 36.8 kilometers then after that that will be like a separation process after 30 seconds you can see uh, the at altitude of 67 kilometers the staging can be done and the boosters are be like get separated and uh, payload fairing can be separated at uh, 253 seconds at 115 km altitude and uh, it can go some after 310 seconds 
can reach up to 135 kilometers at the velocity of 4.8 kilometers per second. So, and after that, a cryogenic engine shut off, burnout happened, and, and then restart another stage, and then again it goes to burnout and launching the satellite. So, this is like a typical mission uh, uh, profile, and this is like a cryo stage development of uh, ISRO. This is like a in general, uh, you know, if you want to go to the moon, you cannot just directly you can go it will go like this like this and and you can go like this you can see the cursor something this is how it goes and finally it goes so there will be like a different options like a mission to mars venus or asteroids whatever the different capabilities so um, there will be like uh, different fly flyable. I mean, Indian vehicles. They are saying like, if you want to go to the Mars, you can able to carry the flyby vehicle means 138 kilograms you can take. And um, so there will be like a, this is like a different uh, rated performance. This will be Mark three uh, has, has like I mean different tank capacity. It can go for six ton up to to lift off. Now this one is like uh, I mentioned in, during the. Uh, the initial, uh, I mean, this the session. I mentioned about the re-entry vehicles, so that this is kind of the re-entry vehicle that uh, maybe you can say you can fly to the space and you can re-enter with a different, uh, like, de-orbiting to the Earth, coming to coming from the space and uh, to land on Earth. So this experiments uh, also going to perform is like a Gaganyan. Also, it will be planning like this, like the man will be inside, and uh, it will come down, re-enter, and de-boost, and parachute deployment, and hold sometimes, and then it will splash down some kind of thing. So next is like launch vehicle kind of it's a Buran and a space shuttle innovation. So this brings reusable launch vehicle. It's also uh, high costly hardware, something so it's still working. They are working. Hope you know about uh, the SpaceX, like a Crew Dragon demo, these cargo dem uh, demonstration supplied previously, and then now the SpaceX is sending the humans to the space right now. And reusable launch vehicles for air breathing propulsion is also trying to work with them. So we are also working separately as like a private space company. So there will be like a two stage to orbits and single stage orbit. There are the next is there will be like a different uh, methods uh, to reaching their orbit. Fully reusable, like uh, uh, they are planning, but I'm not sure like when they are going to complete. It's like a deorbiting here and re entering and parachute deployment and something like that. after the launch, they are trying to recover the, the rocket bodies so that uh, they can save the money. Okay. This is like the India's Human Spaceflight Program of Gaganyan. The plan for the three people to can inside, they can people can sit inside and they can go. And this is the typical configuration released by this row for uh, Gaganyan mission. This is like a launch escape systems here, and there's a crew model here and service model here. So it, we need a, uh, some uh, high capacity thing. So this is like the first stage of separation and second stage of separation, and then uh, the lower Earth orbit injection. And the, this is a spacecraft that will fly around. And then uh, once they're done, so here uh, they will uh, uh, separate the detach the solar panels and things, and re-enter. Crew stage is separation done and arrow braking and parachute deployment and. Uh, Again, another parameter fitting a splashdown on the water. So this is the typical uh, configuration. So the manned mission is like, as I mentioned, they were space vehicle design, the crew model design and aerodynamic control, and uh, crew escape systems, space shoots of crew seating, and robust thermal protection system, and crew health monitoring system, and mission health with a human loop, and manned rated vehicles performance, and uh, the crew training also, I, I shown you some of the things. 
and the navigational guidance control systems advanced power bus this is like a kind of the simulators which i have shown the spacecraft simulators how it is like and environmental control and life supporting systems that so it's like we're going to do by i mean going to reach by moon or something like and coming back so there will be like a different uh, uh, for the moon missions um, uh, different i mean uh, so you need a heavy capacity for example if you see lunar circle in mean lunar circle orbit for taking the 2 ton this is the configuration this is like a 20 ton configuration something and uh, the this is like for isro's future plan by vision 2025 it was shared by some isro officials so i am not affiliated for this um uh uh this uh, the status of this mission it is like completely the isro mission they are, i mean single stage to orbit by they are planning 2025 and advanced propulsion systems they are working on something on interplanetary activities and also orbiting and thank you very much for the listening to uh, listening today all you guys this is the one is like a moon spacecraft that is going to the moon uh, this one at the behind you can see me behind me this is the rover for it is like uh, going to moon and it can explore the moon surface something this is the cosmos sergey vasilievich avidi the man has spent more than 759 days 747 days and 0.59 days in space and this are some uh, member of parliaments and deputy prime minister of uh, vietnam visited our facilities uh, and visited us in uh, two years back and these are my email ids if you want to write or have any questions uh, so i'm happy to answer your all and uh, thank you very much and uh, thanks for the invitation and opportunity to discuss with you all uh hello sir yeah hi tell me good morning i know we have a few questions from the chat mm, yeah please yeah so uh, can we able to reduce space debris by any means because as of now various countries are launching very large number of satellites yeah space debris is for, uh, we can uh, how to clean or how what is the question again uh reduce space debris basically reduce space debris is like uh, there is a called uh, some initiatives have been taken uh, by the european space agency they called like a clean space program so they offer some kind of the billions of the money you know, i mean who are the cleaning the space something like there will be like a different uh, uh, methods you can able to uh clean the space clean space thing there will be like uh, we can use the foam or some technique that you can able to capture the debris and uh, bring it uh, back to the low earth orbit and uh, release from there and it will burn off number 2 is uh, you can uh, use some kind of uh, hunters they use the bow and arrow kind of thing harpoon kind of method you can uh, capture the big rocket sized bodies and uh, do something like that and the uh, second thing is uh, uh, sorry third method is uh, you can use the mesh can you mean how fishes people are catching uh, you know some mesh something so like kind of the big size of the mesh then you can carry bring down uh, to the lower earth orbit and burn it off and uh, the number four method is magnetic tethering type of method Uh, so uh, i mean you just you can magnetize you can uh, use the magnetic field to attract the if the particles is the uh, magnetic uh, property attracting property then we can do something like that and there is company called astroscale uh, one company they are trying to do and also we are also working on uh, uh, this area you can uh, if you want to study more about the debris uh, uh, mitigation and uh, you can study about the debris activities then you can study the space situational awareness 
uh, you can search the astrogram sorry for that sir Sorry, yeah, it's okay. No problem. This like astrograph uh, is uh, you can just you can Google is uh, Dr. Moriba Jaha is working on space situational awareness and also space. I mean space object behavioral science from University of Texas uh, in in USA and also uh, we we're also working on uh, the space debris mission uh, like to how to meeting. I mean uh, remove the orbital debris. something so these are the four methods which i have mentioned we can happy to make some few more studies about that but it's like a very important and critical thing actually the is because there are like elon musk and the jeff bezos there are not only them there are many private players and also government players they are planning to place the satellites more than 11000 plus satellites in a, a, a soon so the debris is also create the problem that's why uh, we call like a uh, inter inter this international committee for uh, idac committee for debris uh, coordination committee something and the uh, un also united nations also keep united nations for outer space affairs also making the guidelines for the satellite launches and the taking something like that. there will be like a few more i mean new guidelines has to come and it also comply the uh, Uh, space debris uh, class something like that so can you uh, explain more about that uh, starlink project and how will it will affect uh, you know uh, space travel will it have any effect on like launching uh, space yeah, space crafts on space um, no starlink is the broadband project actually yeah yeah that matter means they are launching like multiple uh, like i guess 14000 space uh, craft right in space yeah yeah so yeah they will, are going will to that have any effect, yeah will that have, have any effect in launching space crafts in space okay yeah i mean the space uh, traffic your uh, space traffic management how we are going to space uh, yeah my, I, i it won't uh, affect anything actually because uh, it is placed in a few kilometers away of between the each satellite actually so so it won't be make because uh, it won't give uh, pretty much uh, threat actually so because the launch vehicle have the their own uh, uh, way to go i mean like uh, the because it placed every satellite will be placed uh, Between few kilometer distance from each of the satellites, so so we can predict actually. Okay, sir. And uh, we have another question. Uh, what can be the possible cause of Chandrayaan two landing failure? Because ESA already published an article conveying atmosphere has charged particle. Can this lead to an engine failure? No, oh, as I heard from Isro, uh, there are some scientists. They mentioned like the engine performed or over performed or something like that. But I'm not sure because if you see the Britshit lander, uh, I mean from uh, Israel, they, I mean Space IL, they are also crash landed actually. Because there will be like we have to study more on uh, the atmosphere, especially from. Uh, uh moon surface to 100 km so that is the very uh, it's a kind of the death valley for uh, for us but chinese somehow they managed to land on it so uh, there will be like a multiple i feel there will be like a, i was watching uh, the chandrayaan landing in, in russia i, I have seen uh, some uh, there will be like a, uh stability i mean stable entry is uh, also it is some kind of the difficulty in stable entry to the that atmosphere and also there will be like uh, too much of acceleration actually uncontrolled uh, uh, acceleration of uh, the spacecraft uh, uh, that was moved to something i mean if you I mean i don't know like uh, so are you from triple it dm or how it is did you attended that open uh, science day they i shown that how moon landing is happening something so i can maybe that videos uh, is i have shown how we can safely land on the moon so 
you know it is like uh, flying out actually it is not just uh, sim- directly it is for example it is not just landing like this but it will go in a as i meant i shown in a, the presentation also uh, there was a, uh, it will go in a, some parabolic flight uh, i mean some it goes some uh, i mean it goes in a different uh, direction you able to see the screen yes sir the screen is visible Hmm. So, okay, this is for um, Earth. Let us assume uh, Moon. Okay, instead of Earth, it will go like. Ch- I mean, we released from Chandrayaan. Okay, here it comes here, and then it is like we want to come down. Like this, we are slowly. We are this. I mean, we doing actually. We are trying to land on it. it goes like this this flight and then it is crash landed it is like a hit and it is driving a, for example a braking is not performed well aero i mean like a braking so so it got crash landed so we have another question uh how metalox engine are much efficient than carlox engine mm-hmm. and how does the combustion chamber pressure matters can you repeat the question please uh, how metalox engine are much efficient than carlox engine and how does the combustion chamber pressure matters combustion uh, pressure matters because it's a uh... Uh, ultimately it is like how much uh, thrust uh, you required i mean for example uh, how much uh, uh, energy required something so it depends on that actually because that will uh, give the for example i shown you uh, the different uh, configuration for 210 lift off and 3310 lift off so if you need in order to raise uh, 20 ton lift off you need a too much of very very high pressure uh, what you designed for 2 ton so so this is uh, give the that's why uh, the mission objective only define the thing and how much uh, uh, the thrust you required to lift off the things and where you are going actually for example leo geo do or some wherever you know uh so after spacex uh, why hasn't the in uh, space industry shifted to uh, using reusable rockets no actually everyone was trying to use the reusable uh, launch vehicle because uh, let's say 40 40 million dollars for one launch vehicle so if you use the reusable fully reusable launch vehicle so that you can uh, take maybe 80% of the cost or maybe 70% of the money you can save it so it's like a cost effective solutions people are looking for that so that's why the spacex done the amazing thing by re entry of the vehicles they demonstrated people everybody was struggling even isro also struggling every space agency was struggling on that time so they can manage to do this so that's why because it's like a profitability i mean the space economy the main 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 thing is like the cost saving factor and if you have the it can save a lot of uh, materials you know you can reuse it so that only the reason and they have the good capacity i mean the it's like a private space agency they have the agility to do that that is uh, and uh, so that's why they can achieve so that now is also trying but uh, i don't know like when we can see the success what materials uh, are used to manufacture the heat shields on like reentry vehicles uh, some it is uh, mostly they 
ீரியல்ஸ் <laughs> so like a carbon panelic something kind of thing and uh, because there will be like there still lot of things are happening around um, but everyone is using the different uh, uh, kind of the materials research also because space dragon use the different one and uh, uh, this one uh, is the columbia special that is also they, they made the different one different materials configuration shit um how propulsion works in space like without oxygen how is it possible like they are no we have the oxygen tanks you know the okay. because the space propulsion is different one is uh, we use the fuel and oxidizer you can see in propulsion system uh, there will be like uh, oxidizer will be the one tank and uh, 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 the the fuel is on another side so this is all so i have i've seen a youtube video in that uh, a guy was trying to uh, start an engine in vacuum chamber so that was unsuccessful so why was it like that no vacuum chamber uh, the people for that is called a space for space propulsion actually hmm. so there is called you know the you can able to see the oxygen or whatever in uh, less than 100 km after that you cannot see anywhere so that's why that is called the ion propulsion ion thrusters that can use actually okay. mostly you know uh, for mostly the reentry vehicles you know the they call like as i mentioned like a pika they call like a conolic uh, impurated carbon ablator you can say like this kind of uh, uh, kind of uh, carbon fiber that can be used and new materials as i mentioned is like a uh, graphene kind of things that people are trying to 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 start working on as like to provide the alternative something and also there's like uh, as i mentioned the uh, space dragon crew also they use a uh, uh, different version of pika you can call it like, uh, thermal protection systems um okay sir thank you uh, there are no more questions from the chat so thank okay. you yeah okay thank you very much uh, this is murali yeah yes sir i uh, said so thank you sir for the insightful lecture um mm-hmm. i have one question uh, recently it is also related to the moon mission yeah. recently i read in news that like uh, china is able to like um, do this yeah, like, they made it successful success they brought also docking also very successful and brought some uh, yes sir uh, sample from the moon can you like anything about like because i read only from the news and i don't know the details like uh, yeah yeah it's like uh, they made a wonderful uh, job they have picked some samples from the moon and they brought it to the earth it was amazing thing actually i can say it's like with respect to the political reason but i can say in you know, a technically the chinese manned uh, uh, vehicle research uh, that organization Ch- changsa chinese manned space agency so they are doing on uh, uh, changsa they are doing amazing thing they just landed on uh, the robotic uh, prospector or something like that i mean the small robotic lander and just land and pick the the samples and fly flew from there to uh, the 100 km halt above the moon surface and then they navigated from there to earth and it is around uh, it's like a uh, pretty much very amazing innovative things actually they brought the samples 
and uh, their reentry uh, i mean they they back from moon sir moon orbit to our earth orbit and then they back to the they, they navigate uh to um, the i think they landed on gasagasan i believe from some places near in gasagasan and the chinese border somewhere so they brought it, uh, i mean like reentry as i mentioned uh, during the lecture also it is like a balloon uh, it, it's a kind of the solar panels and power things will be uh, detached and then it will fall like a coconut falling from the space kind of thing and after that heat shield remove and uh you get the atmosphere like some 10 km or you know, normally they do the parachute deployments at 5 km something like that or maybe some i mean it depends on this and then they deploy uh something and uh, it will land some land on uh, on earth so we can pick. so this is how we are also planning uh, like uh the, you can see here you can see this drawing uh we, uh, or something you can say this like uh, we can collect some samples reentry capsule it will look like so this will go off and here the parachute will come up and uh, it will splash down so this the simple yeah thank you very much sir thank you yes, sir hello yeah please i am listening uh, uh, sir uh, japan told that they are making a satellite with wood is it wood suitable for a space satellite it is like uh, um, okay we can say it can good for leo but it is it is not suitable for communication satellites and all you cannot build on it it's like kind of new innovative materials i mean maybe they are trying to use for very short term So they are using the normal wood or any reinforced wood yeah, i think uh, reinforced wood only it mean you can they use i think uh, compressed wood they do the forge of the wood and make uh, kind of compressed wood i believe something because in order to it is not necessary because it's a kind of uh, demonst i mean trying to find the new methods of uh, the uh, satellite bodies i think it's a very cube set it's not the mm, mean it may not be operate more than 6 uh, months or something like they have the very less timeline i believe something so it cannot be used i mean for long duration missions and also it serves as some people are to use the peak material normal some other people are use the 3d printed peak but um, these people are i don't know how like how this for just for a new and trying to demonstrate a new methods new materials kind of thing actually okay sir thank you so are there any questions so let's uh, build for triple id dm the sat that's maybe the quick we can do something you know for your club yes, sir actually we are planning to build on cube sat yeah we can build a cube sat and we can uh, teach you and we can train you all Uh, into building a small sat like that and uh, you can launch in either psl v4 stage or something as yes, sure sir so actually we are planning on objective on uh, uh, to test the radiation i mean uh, atmospheric uh, conditions are like humidity uh, water vapor and ozone layer and uh, other type of uh, atmospheric parameters mm-hmm. and compare with the uh, past few years uh, to get the updated data now okay yeah we are happy to do that we do the stratospheric launches every year i mean like uh, last year we launched three launches of stratospheric mission to study the uh, ozone kind of thing so you can build for that i mean we can and turn we can do it. 
Yes. So is it perfect for cube set? We can make it in cube set for that yeah. Uh, object. Yeah, we can use the form factor uh, cube cube set. Yes, sir, we need some uh, resources uh, to learn more about the cube set and design making. Is there any uh, resources for us? Yeah, we uh, can provide you offline. So, uh, I mean, uh, folks are there, so we can. Sure, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Definitely, we can work together. Also, like uh, we are also planning to sign the MOU with Dr. Uh, Jayakumar uh, because the COVID got delayed. Uh, is not able to come here. So, apparently, like we'll be like associating with uh, Dr. Jayakumar Venkatesan, and also like uh, he'll be helping us uh, like uh, building our own satellite and, uh, and uh, yeah, definitely. Sir. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thanks for the invitation and uh, thanks for listening uh, for the time. So we are happy to to discuss and collaborate and uh, to support uh, the your initiatives from Triple T D M. And uh, thank you, Professor Murli, for doing an amazing job in encouraging the students to take part in the activities. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello. Yes, tell me. Uh, sir, I'm Deepika from second year CSE. 